Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolphe Manjou in Morning Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The odds were 10,000 to 1 against a certain 13-year-old girl who came to a certain Hollywood studio looking for a job. But the theater was in our blood. Her mother and father were vaudevillians. She herself had worked in a singing act with her sisters. And like every other trooper the world over, Judy Garland wanted to be a star. Seven years have passed, and the dreams of our little 10,000 to one shot have come true. Judy is a star. The latest evidence of that is the new Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer picture for me and my gal. Because she's lived so much of tonight's story herself, we've cast her as one of the stars in Zoe Aiken's great drama of the footlights, the RKO motion picture, Morning Glory. And starring with her are two leading men, John Payne and Adolf Mongeau. Morning Glory is the saga of one stage-struck girl who had talent and a fighting heart. And because it's written in such warm and human terms, it becomes the story of all those girls who flocked to Broadway and Hollywood through the years. But with each girl, the story has a different ending. And here's another story that's developed an unusual twist. Some time ago, I told you about my adventures in washing my own woolen socks. Later, a newspaper cartoon gave a very graphic picture of the same activity. And consequently, my mail has been full of letters from men all over the country who turn out to be brothers under the skin. They use Lux Flakes, too. I thought at the time I took over the job that I was really some sort of domestic hero. But it appears that I have many companions at the wash tub and all seem anxious to give advice to a fellow member of the club. Some insist that wire drying frames are the best. Others vote for wooden ones. I'm a wooden frame man myself. But the main point is, plenty of those suds that come only from Lux Flakes. And now the thrill that comes with the curtain going up as we present the first act of Morning Glory, starring Judy Garland as Eva Lovelace, John Payne as Joseph Sheridan, and Adolf Manjou as Louis Easton. Hey, I see him now, please. I've been waiting here for three years. But I did have an appointment. Please, quiet. Mr. Easton can't see everybody. Come back at three o'clock. Quiet! Lewis Easton, the famous theatrical producer, is casting a new play. Up and down Broadway, the tidings have spread like a flame. And his outer office is jammed with actors and actresses, young and old, good and bad, well-dressed and shabby. Among them, and obviously out of place, is Eva Lovelace. Eva is the product of a small college town and looks as though she might have won school honors in dramatics. She smiles brightly at the besieged secretary and speaks in her finest stage English. How do you do? My name is Eva Lovelace, and I'd like to see Mr. Easton, please. So would a lot of people. Did you get a call? Well, no, I didn't. You see, I've never met Mr. Easton. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it? What experience, please? Well, I haven't had any. That is not on Broadway. No experience? I see. Yes. That's why I'd like to meet Mr. Easton. Because if he's never seen me, then he doesn't know what I'm like. And that's rather important when you're casting to type, isn't it? Yes, rather. I'll put your name on the list. Thank you. Have a seat if you can find one. Thank you very much. I hear Rita Vernon's going to do the lead in this opus. That's a break. For her, Louis Easton. Well, she is a box office draw. Why, I don't know. What's the name of the play? Anyone know? Blue Skies. Joseph Sheridan wrote it. Look, there's Sheridan now. Oh, Mr. Sheridan, 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 Quiet, please, quiet. There are only a few parts. Just a moment, please. Is Vivian Hall here? Yes, Mr. Sheridan. Will you wait, please, and Mr. Hedges? Uh, right here, sir. Mr. Easton will see you in a moment, Hedges. Thank you. Now, we won't have time to see anyone else today. Oh, uh, sorry. Miss Hall. Oh, yes? May I congratulate you on obtaining a part? 
It must be thrilling to work for the great Mr. Easton. Thank you. I I don't believe I've met you. My name is Eva Lovelace. You've probably never heard of me because I'm just starting. If Mr. Easton takes me, this will be my New York debut. Oh, but I've acted ever since I was a child. Really? Oh, yes, just little theaters, of course. Amateur, but good. I suppose you've had a great deal of experience. Yes, I have. Aren't you cold in that suit? It's hardly warm enough for a day like this. Oh, well, I, I like to feel cold. It makes me feel strong. Oh, Miss Hall. Yes? You won't have to stay any longer. Come in tomorrow and we'll give you the part. Thank you. Mr. Hedges, do you mind waiting a few more minutes? <laughs> Not at all. I'm used to waiting. Thanks. Mr. Hedges... Did anyone ever tell you you have an absolutely exquisite voice? Well, thank you, young lady. I could tell you with a real thing right off. I'm taken for English sometimes, too. That is, at home in Franklin, Vermont. May I sit beside you? Why, certainly. Thank you. Of course, I know your name is Hedges, but won't you tell me your full name? Because I want you to be my very first friend in New York. Well, it's Robert Harley Hedges. My, it's impressive. Mine's Eva Lovelace. And that's a nice name. It's partly made up and partly real. It was Ada Love. Love is my family name. I added the lace. Do you like it? A shorter name would be much more convenient on a sign. Still, Eva Lovelace in Camille, for instance, or Eva Lovelace in Romeo and Juliet. Sounds very distinguished, doesn't it? Oh, yes. You see, I don't want to keep my family's name because I shall probably have several scandals while I live, and I don't want to cause them any trouble until I'm famous. Then they won't mind. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, you, uh, you said something about my becoming your first friend. Yes, my friend and teacher. You speak so beautifully, and I, I know I speak so nondescriptly, but I, I wanted to ask you if you'll give me a lesson every day right off. But I will. Oh, I want to pay. Not at once, because I, I have only enough money for, for a certain length of time. I've got to succeed before it's gone. But I had planned to go to the best teacher I could find and arrange to pay later. Of course, I should have to find someone who believed in me unequivocally. How? Uh, Unequivocally. Do you mean unequivocally? <laughs> yes, that's it. Merci, monsieur. You see, those are the things I've got to learn. Won't you give me a lesson every day and let me pay you later when I find a good part? But I live way uptown and, well, my place isn't exactly a studio. Oh, that doesn't matter so long as it's quiet. And we can sit and smoke. Oh, I smoke, of course. Though in Franklin, it still isn't done in the best of families. Really? <laughs> oh, isn't that a picture of Ellen Terry up there on the wall? Yes, I played with her many years ago. Was she very lovely? Very. You've been in the theater a long time, haven't you? Did you know Sarah Bernhardt? Yes. She was the most wonderful of all, wasn't she? They were both wonderful. Bernhardt broke your heart. Ellen Terry mended it. <sighs> I suppose I'll never be wonderful. Not wonderful like them. But I've got something wonderful in me, too. You'll see. You'll help me with all the great parts, won't you? Juliet, Lady Macbeth, and Cleopatra. Someday my picture will be on that wall. Why not? Uh, you see that picture next to the door? Oh, yes, that's Rita Vernon. Rita Vernon. A few years ago, she was young and ambitious and unknown, like you. She made a hit in a small part, and... And now she's a star. She's in Mr. Easton's office now, isn't she? I heard someone say so. Oh, I'd love to meet her. I saw her once. She was so sweet. Yes, at times, she's very sweet. She has a lovely disposition. Very lovely indeed. Well, know it or know it right now, Lewis Easton. I'm sick of the whole thing. Sick of it, do you hear? I wouldn't care if I never played another part for you again. Rita, please. Stop throwing my vases around. Now sit down and calm yourself. You're giving me a headache. What do you suppose you give me? Three trashy plays in the last two years, and now another one. Rita, that's not very complimentary to Mr. Sheridan. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just the author. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you, Joseph. You have written me a couple of hits. Well, thanks. But I don't want light things anymore. I want drama, something I can get my teeth into. But Joseph wrote Blue Skies especially for you. I wouldn't know it from reading it. The man's part hogs the whole show. Oh, Lewis, why can't you get me something by what's-his-name? You know the man who wrote the thing Catherine Cornell did last season. Mona? Yes. Didn't you take an option on a play by him because Joseph was crazy about it? Yes, but then... Yes, uh... he did. It'll be a great play when we find the right woman for the part, Rita. Right woman for the part. Why haven't you sent this play to me to read? Well, it uh, isn't translated yet, Rita. I'm working on it now. That's right. I don't think you'll like it, Rita. I'll decide that for myself. What's the name of it? Uh, the Golden Bow. Now listen, Rita. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll make you a proposition. You play Blue Skies for me. After that, you can pick your own play. Any play you like. All right. When can I see a script? Lewis, uh, I... We'll send it to your department tomorrow, Rita. Tomorrow morning. But I tell you she won't like it. It's all wrong for her. Joseph, please. Rita isn't silly enough to play something she isn't right for. Are you, Rita? Certainly not. 
But I have an idea, Lewis, that I'll be just right for Golden Bough. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, sweet. Lewis, are you crazy? Now, wait. Vernon can't play that part. It's sacrilege. I know, I know, but I had to do something to get her to play Blue Skies. Well, you didn't have to ruin the Molnar piece. Quiet, quiet. Come in. Yes, what is it? Mr. Hedges, sir. He's been waiting quite a while. Oh, yes. Send him in. Good morning, Mr. Easton. Hello there, Bob. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Quite all right. Have a seat. Uh, now, uh, the part's right up your street. You play... How do you uh... do, Mr. Easton? I'm so happy to meet you. What? How did you get in here? Oh, this is, uh, this is Eva Lovelace, Mr. Easton. She was waiting outside, and we were talking, and... Uh... Well, I just made Mr. Hedges bring me in. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Easton, but if there's one person I've wanted to meet, it's you. I just reverence your work. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. That's uh, very kind. Uh, Miss Lovelace is uh, she's rather anxious to become an actress. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Now, uh, Bob, about the part. It's not long, but it's good. The father again? <laughs> that's right. How about it? Delighted. Well, go and tell Seymour to make up a contract. Thanks very much, Mr. Easton. Uh, may I sit down here and wait, Mr. Easton? Mm -hmm. uh, wait for what? Well, until you're not busy so you can interview me. Well, I'm very busy right this minute. Oh, it's all right, Lewis. I'm all through now. Oh. Uh, sit down, miss. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, what did you say your name was, Miss... Uh... Lovelace. Eva Lovelace. Do you like it? I could change it if you don't. No, no, it's all right. Oh, I'm glad. Have you been on the stage long, Miss Lovelace? Well, not on the regular stage, but I was in a lot of plays the Franklin Theater Guild gave at the Little Theater. The Little Theater? Yes, in Franklin, mm -hmm. Vermont. You know the Franklin players. Franklin players. Oh, yes, of course, of course. <laughs> Franklin's where I lived until some time ago. The Franklin newspaper seemed quite sure I had a future. I play all sorts of parts. Hedda, you know Ibsen's Hedda, of course. The old woman in Riders to the Sea and Kitty and You Never Can Tell by Shaw. And then I play... Shaw? Oh, yes. Bernard Shaw, the one and only. You think Shaw's clever, Miss Lovelace? Oh, he's our greatest living dramatist. Is that so? Oh, yes. By the way, I had a charming letter from him the other day. I wrote him a letter and told him I was coming to New York and expected to be very famous and have a theater of my own so I could act his Cleopatra. I have his answer right here with me. It's never left me a moment since I received it. I even sleep with it under my pillow. Well, that's fine. Well, suppose you come back uh, next week or so. Uh, wait, Lewis. May I see the letter, Miss Lovelace? Of course. I think it was charming of him to write, don't you, Miss Easton? Oh, yes, uh, charming. Lewis, this is very interesting. He's very happy Miss Lovelace is going to see he's properly recognized when she has her own repertory theater. He hopes Miss Lovelace won't forget him. Oh, I won't. I've sworn it. There will always be a Shaw play in my repertoire as long as I remain in the theater. Of course, I expect to die at my zenith. My star shall never set. I've sworn that, too. And when the time comes when I feel I've done my best, I shall really die by my own hand. Some night at the end of the play on the stage. The producer will love that, I'm sure. <laughs> Miss Lovelace, I hope you'll excuse me, but I have a few appointments waiting. Of course, I know. And you don't think there's anything for me in your new production? Well, I'm afraid not. There aren't any young girl parts in this play. Well, perhaps an old woman then, or a middle-aged one. I can do both. There really isn't anything, Miss Lovelace. Oh, I'm sorry. Of course, money is no object with me. I'll play any part that appeals to me for $20. Oh, but I'll never, under any circumstances, play a part for which I do not feel a sincere congeniality. Well, that's very creditable. Now, Miss... No money's uh... nothing to me, absolutely nothing. I could have married for money if I'd wanted to. Edwin Talbot, the son of W.E. Talbot, one of the richest men in Franklin, wanted to marry me. You've heard of W.E. Talbot, the Chow Chow King. I, no, I, uh, I don't believe I have. Honey, why, Talbot's Chow Chow is famous, of course. Practically owns Franklin. But I think artists should be free. Free to live, free to love, free to... Miss Lovelace, please, uh, uh, Joseph, that appointment. We're late, very late. Sorry, Miss Lovelace. Well, I, I won't hold you any longer. Good day, Mr. Easton. Good day, good day. Just leave your number with my secretary. I will, and good day to you, Mr... Uh, uh, Sheridan. Of course. I'll see you again, I hope. And you, Mr. Easton. Yes, yes. Uh, come in when you get another letter from Bernard Shaw. Thank you. You've been so kind. Au revoir. Au revoir, au revoir. Oh, uh, excuse me, just one more thing, Mr. Easton. Yes... I've had voice training, too, singing, you know. I've never taken it very seriously because acting, straight dramatic acting, is my strong point. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Au revoir. Au revoir, au revoir. Oh, Joseph, I wish you'd show a little more respect for my valuable time. What's the matter? But why encourage those people? I thought she was going to spend the day. You know, Lewis, I think that kid's got something. Well, she's got nerve, if that's what you mean. Say, don't you think she might do the bit we had in the last act? What bit? The maid? Sure. Doesn't have to be acted. If she'll just get up there and speak, that's all we need. Why don't you let her try? Are you crazy? Why not? The girl's looking for a break. But she's a nut. She's wacky. Oh, no, she isn't. She's just trying to make an impression. Go on, give her the part. All right, all right, I'll think it over. Drop that teaser. 
Hey, where are those steps? Five minutes. Five minutes to curtain. Five minutes. Come in. Hello, Eva. Why, Mr. Hedges. Well, my dear, how do you feel on your first opening night? Nervous? Oh, dear, no. I feel as if at last I'm in my rightful sphere. Of course, I know I'm just a small cog in bringing a creation to life. I wouldn't say that, my dear. Oh, well, I only have three lines. That's true, but those three lines are very important to the plot. Yes. I realize the responsibility entrusted to me. And then I practically have the last line in the play, haven't I? Where I say to Miss Vernon, Mr. Frederick is calling long distance. Will you take it here, ma'am? Well, then there's only one more short speech, so it's really the finish of the play, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. On stage, curtain. On stage, please. Well, here we go. Good luck, my dear. Good luck to you, Mr. Hedges, and thank you so much. Nonsense. What for? For helping an actress get started on her career. Let's hope it's a good long one, my dear. See you later. Yes, Mr. Hedges. Mr. Frederick is calling long distance. Will you take it here, ma'am? No. Uh, Mr. Frederick is calling long distance. Oh. Mr. Frederick is, is calling long distance. Mr. Frederick is calling long distance. Will you take it here, ma'am? <laughs> Who is it? It's the maid, ma'am. Well, what do you want? Mr. Frederick is calling long distance. Will, will you take it here, ma'am? <laughs> you may tell Mr. Frederick that I've just gone to bed. All right. Take it up again. Take up the curtain. That's enough. Take it down. Well, Lewis, it's over. It's over, all right. It came right next to being over for good. What happened to that girl? You mean Eva? Yes, that Lovelace nut. Oh, I just think she was a little nervous. She was not. She got out there and hammed all over the place. Who does she think she is, Bernhardt? Louis, Louis, you'll have to do something about that maid. It was horrible. All right, Rita, all right. She simply ruined the tag. Mr. Vernon, I'm terribly sorry, terribly. I, I don't know what happened to me. Don't speak to me. Oh, my nerves. Curtain call, Miss Vernon. Shut up. Lois, you've got to do something, do you hear? Now, listen, Rita, I tell you Don't I'll do... tell me! Do it! Well, Mr. Easton, I'm so sorry. When I got out there, I, I know it was bad with the lights and the people. Yes, I know, I know. I'm sorry, too. Don't worry, Eva. You'll be all right tomorrow night. No, she won't, I'm afraid. Oh, yes, I will, Mr. Easton. I'll, I'll work on it all day, and tomorrow night I'll... There won't be any tomorrow night, Miss Lovelace. Not for you. I have my star to think of. We'll have to replace you. Replace me, but Mr. Easton... Oh, Charlie, what happened to those boarders in the last scene? You was blowing. Oh, Mr. Well, Easton... Well, watch it tomorrow. Yes, sir, I will. Where's Jim Blaine? Oh, Mr. Easton... Now, tell him I want to see him, will you? Eva, don't cry. Here, wait, come here. No, please. Please don't say anything. Eva, let her go, Joseph. There's nothing you can do about it. She's just an amateur and not a very good one at that. Skies by Joseph Sheridan, starring Rita Vernon, with John Hamilton, Cora Blake, Robert Head. All right, all right. Move along, please. Oh, good evening, officer. How kind of late, aren't you, miss? Yes, I was I was just standing in the lobby looking at the pictures. Well, and... suppose you stand somewhere else, off my beat. I wouldn't want to run you in, miss. Oh, well, it's all right, really. You see there on the sign? That's that's my name at the bottom there. I'm Eva Lovelace. Oh, are you? Yes. You see, I... I'm an actress. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of Morning Glory, starring Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolph Manjou. You recognize that sound? Well, it's Mrs. Brown washing up the dinner dishes. And right next door... Yes, that's Mrs. Allen doing dishes in her kitchen. It sounds just about the same, doesn't it? And that's too bad, because there's really a big difference in what those two women are doing. You see, one of them is using Lux Flakes for her dishes, and the other one is using... Well, any one of a number of strong dishwashing soaps. 
One look at those two pair of hands tells the story. The Lux hands are soft and smooth. The others are rough and red and unattractive, typical dishpan hands. Yet those soft, smooth Lux hands do just as much dishwashing as the rough, unattractive ones. It's the soap that makes the difference. And changing soaps, changing from strong suds to gentle Lux flakes, can change those rough red hands back to their natural loveliness. That has been proved by actual tests. It's worth a lot to any woman to have hands she's proud of. But do you know how little it costs to change from strong soaps to gentle Lux? You can do it for less than a penny a day. Get the thrifty big box of Lux Flakes first thing tomorrow and use it for your dishes every day. After Act Two, we've got a special bargain for all flower lovers. Have a pencil and paper ready. You'll want to make a note of this. Now... Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Morning Glory, starring Judy Garland as Eva Lovelace, John Payne as Joseph Sheridan, and Adolph Monju as Louis Easton. Six months have passed since Eva Lovelace failed in her Broadway debut. Six long months of hopeful waiting haunting producers' offices by day, tossing sleeplessly in her boarding house bed at night, her heart aching with disappointment and despair. It's 11 o'clock in the evening. Across the street from the theater where Blue Skies is playing, Eva sits at the counter of a cup of coffee. You want anything else, miss? Uh, no, thank you. Just coffee? That's all, thank you. Okay. Good evening. Oh. Isn't this my old pupil? Oh, Mr. Hedges, how nice to see you. I was just passing the window. I thought it was you. It's been a long time since you came for a lesson, Eva. <laughs> well, I, I've been so frightfully busy. You know how it is. Yes. Uh, let me see. The last time I ran into you, you were... Uh... Oh, yes, I, I was rehearsing for the frolics. Of course, it was only chorus work, but I took the job for experience. One needs all sorts of experience, and... Besides, there was a lull in the drama. Yes. Uh, are you working now? Well, no, not at the moment, anyhow. Here's your check, miss. Here, I'll take that. Oh, no, you mustn't. Uh, how much is it, please? Five cents. Five cents, is that all? Yes, I, I had coffee. After dinner coffee. Of course. Here you are. Come along, Eva. I'll take you home. Oh, but really, Mr. Hedges, you mustn't go out of your way, really. I'll get a cab. And by the way, where do you live? Oh, well, isn't that stupid of me? I, I can't remember the address. You see, I just moved. I... I didn't like the place I was in. I see. Well, until you remember, you just come along with me. I'm on my way to a party. Oh, I'd love to, but I... I don't feel like meeting strangers. Our host isn't exactly a stranger. It's Louis Easton. Are you sure you won't have any supper? Well, not just now, please. Perhaps later, Mr. Sheridan. All right. You know, it's nice seeing you again. You sort of dropped out of things, didn't you? I've often wondered about you. Well, I've been rather busy. Isn't this a delightful room, Mr. Sheridan? I like that etching. It looks like a whistler. Why, yes, it is. And that's a lovely pen and ink of Mr. Easton. He's very attractive, isn't he? Yes, very. I've thought of him often. I was sorry on his account I wasn't good in that part. Well, it's always rather hard getting started. Even my dear, I brought you some food. Well, thank you, Mr. Hedges, but <laughs> who cares about prosaic things like food? <laughs> oh, no, don't take it away. <laughs> there you are, my dear. <laughs> Looks awfully nice. Here, here, I'm taking care of this little lady. Am I right, little lady? Go away, Charlie. Go away? No, no, I discovered this little lady when she first came in. Here, little lady, champagne. Oh, another? Do you think I should? Sure, sure, go on. I've never had champagne until tonight. Go on, drink up, drink <laughs> up. Oh, it, it tickles, doesn't it? Tickles? <laughs> she said it tickles. <laughs> hey, Charlie, beat it. Go on, yeah, will you? Boy, you come along with me. We'll have a bite to eat. Tickles. <laughs> she said it tickles. Oh, uh, what were we talking about? I don't know. How long is Blue Skies going to run? Oh, about another month. Then we're going to take it on tour. And after that? Well, after that, Rita Vernon is going to play the Molnar part. Golden Bow? Oh, she could never do justice to that part. Well, what makes you so sure of that? Because she couldn't, don't you see? She just couldn't. I know, I read the play. Well, of course it hasn't been translated yet. Well, I... I read it in the original. Oh, sorry. Do you mind, please, some, some more champagne? More? Well, don't you think I ought to? Well, that depends, I'd say, on what time you had dinner. <laughs> what about lunch? Oh, lunch helps, too. Oh, look, there's Mr. Easton. Do you suppose he'd mind if I went over and spoke to him? 
No, I don't think so. Mr. Easton. Oh, Mr. Easton. Yes? Mr. Easton, do you mind if I sit here beside you? Not at all, Miss Lovelace. Thank you, Mr. Easton. I've got something to tell you. Mr. Easton, I shouldn't be surprised if I am a great actress. Oh, you think so? I shouldn't be surprised. Either I'm a rotten actress or I'm a great actress. I'm not just a pretty good actress. Sometimes I think I'm very, very bad. No good at all. But tonight I think I'm wrong when I think that. I feel wonderful, Mr. Easton. Not afraid anymore. Well, I'm glad of that. You see, I, I wasn't afraid. Not for a long time. When I lost that part, I thought it must be because I was a genius. And geniuses always have a hard time. Then I began to get afraid. Maybe I'm crazy, I got thinking. Maybe I'm not a genius. And then I said, it's better not to think. In this world where but to think is to be full of sorrow, it's better not to think because I'm almost thoroughly convinced I'm a genius well, again. Don't listen to Miss Lovelace, don't you think you'd better have some supper? No, please listen. I, I want to tell you. I love your partner, Mr. Easton. I love New York, except that Broadway is too commercial. But isn't New York a beautiful city? I love it. I love to walk and walk and look and look. In Franklin, if you walk very far, you're out on a country road with nothing but cornfields everywhere. Still, there's something about it, about those cornfields, that gives you a feeling of being great and lonely. I feel it now, right here in my heart. I tell you, I know. I know I'm a great actress. I'm the greatest young actress living. And I'm going to go on getting greater and greater. Miss Lovelace, you're making a fool of yourself. A fool? That shows how much you know. You're talking to the greatest actress in the world, and I'm going to prove it. Listen to this. Listen. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. Eva, come outside, please. What are they laughing at? Hamlet's not a comedy, it's a tragedy. Keep quiet, keep quiet, do you hear? Eva. If you think that's so funny, maybe you think Romeo and Juliet's funny, too. Give me that shawl from the piano and everybody sit still. You're going to hear some acting. Now listen. Oh, Romeo, Romeo. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but my sworn love and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Tis that but thy name that is my enemy. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name, which is no part of thee, take all myself. What's the matter? Eva, what is it? It's my head. I feel so, so funny. I, I feel as if I'm going to... Hey, what happened? She fainted. Get some water, somebody. Water, here. Well, that's one way of getting attention. Come on, Joseph, give me a hand. We'll carry her into the library. Uh, put her down over here. That's it. She'll be all right. I'll have the maid come in and look after her. Come on. Poor kid. She probably hasn't had a square meal in a month. Or perhaps she's had just too much champagne. That time sometimes happens to people. Well, how do you feel, Miss Lovelace? Oh, I feel... Oh. Here, take another swallow of this. Oh, no, I couldn't. I just... Couldn't. Here, here, it's only coffee. Good for you. Oh, thank you. My head feels a little funny. I'm sorry I spoiled your party, Mr. Easton. Now, don't be silly. You didn't spoil it. But where is everybody? They've gone home. You've been asleep for a couple of hours. Oh, I... I'm so sorry. But you've nothing to be sorry for. I mean it. Did you... Did you like my Juliet? Your Juliet... I thought it was charming. Oh, I'm glad. I did want to prove it to you that I could really act. When I flopped in blue skies, I didn't mind so much for myself, but I did mind failing you. I'd worshipped you from afar for such a long time. You... I beg your pardon? I'd worshipped you. I did. I'm like that, I think. You've done such beautiful things in the theater, and you can't do beautiful things unless... unless you think beautiful thoughts. That's why I liked you. Because I knew you'd be like this. Kind and sweet. No one has ever said that to me before. You almost make me believe it. You're very sweet, Eva. Thank you. Now, don't you think I'd better take you home? Oh, no, please, not yet. Just let me sit here and, and talk. There's so much I want to talk to you about. All right, we'll talk. Go ahead. You think I'm worth talking to, don't you? I hope you do. It means so much to, to speak to someone who understands things as you do. 
Don't you think you give me a little too much credit? Most people think of me as being pretty hard-boiled. Oh, you're not, though. You may think you are, too, but down underneath, you're, you're like a boy. You bluster as if you're so very sure of things, and you're not. Except your love of the theater. That's why I've never been afraid of you. You're much too young and much too pretty to be afraid of anything. I am, though. Mr. Easton, did you ever want anything with all your heart and have a, a horrible feeling inside of you that you were never going to get it? Many times. I felt like that when I was just a kid and a road show came to town. I used to hang around the stage door every night, and once they let me do a walk-on, I tripped on my first entrance. <laughs> and yet you've succeeded and done great things, beautiful things. So can you, Eva. Yes, I know. It's such a long, hard road, isn't it? But I'm willing to work hard. You can have anything if you work for it. That must be true. Perhaps, perhaps I could make the road easier for you, if you'd let me. Then, then you really think I can act? I think, I think you're the most beautiful, the most charming creature I've ever met. Eva. Oh, why did you do that? Why did you kiss me? Why? Did you think I wanted you to? No, of course not. But I did. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't know I wanted you to kiss me until you did. You know, I've always said an actress had to know everything, and I never knew anything. Oh, I feel so strange. Is this what they call love, Lewis? Because if it is, I... I think I like it. Eva? Yes? Eva, I think I'd better take you home. Come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Harvey. Mr. Sheridan is here, sir. Oh. Come in, Joseph. Hello, Lewis. How are you? Sit down. I'm sorry I had to get you over here so early, but uh, I need your help. Well? I, um, I got myself a little involved last night. What, again? Yes, I, uh, I don't know just how to handle the situation. You can get yourself into more jams, Lewis. What happened? Nothing, really. Absolutely Nothing. Just the same, I wondered if you'd see her for me and, uh, well, tell her I've gone out of town or something. I'm very much embarrassed, Joseph. She's, she's an awful little fool. Oh, she's undoubtedly that. Uh, she, she's got very romantic ideas. Not only about me, about the theater, too. I wish I'd never given her that part in the first place. I wouldn't be in this jam now. What part? What girl are you talking about? That, uh, that girl, Eva. Eva Lovelace? Certainly. Who did you think I was talking about? Well, I... I didn't know. Well, the little fool thinks she's in love with me. Well, how about it, Joseph? I'd like you to see her for me. Sorry, I can't do it, Lewis. Oh, come on. I don't feel that way about it. All you've got to do is to tell her that I'm out of town. Oh, that's very easy, easy isn't it? Why don't you give her another part? No. My plays aren't cast like that. You know it. Besides, I don't want to see her again. Why bother about her at all? Because she's young. She's half-starved, and she's on my mind. I've made out a check for her. Here. Give it to her. You can do your own dirty work. Give it to her yourself. All right. I understand how you feel. No, I, I don't think you do. Wait a minute. You're not going to tell me that you... Oh, no, no. Oh, it's very funny, isn't it? I'm glad I can hand you a laugh once in a while. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was that way. You're sort of romantic, too. Yeah, I, I suppose so. That's why I understand her. You know what she's going through. Do you know what she'll have to go through yet before she begins to do the things she has her heart set on doing? Do you suppose this is going to help her? No, I don't. If you can think of any way out, I'll be glad to hear about it. All right. I'll speak to her. I suppose the sooner she begins to look at things sensibly, the better it'll be for her. Give me the check. Here you are. I'll see you later. I'll be in the office. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, sure. Joseph. Oh, hello. I, I wanted to see you. Oh, but I can't stay. I, I only came down for a minute. I'm going out. I, I just wanted to leave these flowers for him, for, for Mr. Easton. <laughs> they aren't much, are they? But they're nice. Tell him I brought them. Oh, uh, wait. You, you can wait a moment, can't you? Well, I, I want to go before I see him. Of course, it's, it's only for a little while. It's just that there's so much in my heart, and I want to be by myself. Do you understand? Yes. I think I'll walk through the park alone, where I can plan a little. We'll do wonderful things together, Lewis and I. And you'll help us, won't you? You know what it's like? It's like two rivers flowing through the same valley to the same sea. His life and mine. 
And now they're to flow together. Oh, I'll make him proud of me, Joseph, so proud. Eva, I, I want to tell it's you... It's strange how it's all happened. Yesterday I was alone and frightened, really a little frightened. And now... <laughs> of course, it isn't because his work is in the theater or because he's important and can help me. Even if he'd never seen a theater and never wanted to see one, I think I'd feel very much the same. At least just now. I liked him the moment I saw him. You remember that day in the office? <laughs> years and years ago. And you've always been terribly kind to me, Joseph. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Joseph. Was that Eva? Joseph. Uh, what? Was that Eva out here? Oh, yes. Well, what did you tell her? Where is she? Is she gone? Joseph. Oh. oh, yes, yes, she's gone. What do you care where she is? We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mr. DeMille and our stars Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolph Manjou will be back for Act Three of Morning Glory in just a moment. Meantime, here's some more news about the Lux Rainbow Garden offer. It's the most exciting flower bargain we've ever had. Ten first-quality tulip bulbs for only 25 cents. And they come to you now at just the right time to plant them. Yes, right now, in the fall, is tulip planting time. Our Lux tulip bulbs come from one of America's biggest and best-known bulb growers. They are the very same giant Mayflowering tulips that are listed in his catalog at a much higher price. And they're yours for just 25 cents and one Lux opening tab or one Lux toilet soap wrapper. They're easy to grow. Plant them now, and along about next May, you'll have a rainbow garden of stunning tulips with gorgeous long stems and big blossoms in lovely rainbow shades. Even in a city apartment, you can enjoy these Lux tulips. Plant them in flower pots. Just follow the simple directions that come with the bulbs, and they'll bloom indoors in time for Easter. You'll be wise if you order several rainbow tulip gardens. Yes, they're a real bargain, one you won't want to miss. So mail your order this very night. Here's what you do. Take the opening tab from any size box of Lux flakes, or a wrapper from one cake of Lux toilet soap. Mail it with your name and address and 25 cents in coin, no stamps, please, to Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. With your 10 tulip bulbs, we'll send an illustrated leaflet of planting directions. But please allow at least two weeks for them to reach you. And please be sure to include your own name and address. Order as many Lux Rainbow Gardens as you like, but be careful to send 25 cents in coin and either a Lux Flakes opening tab or a Lux toilet soap wrapper for each set of 10 bulbs you want. Your dealer has convenient order blanks. Remember, the address is Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. This offer is good only in the United States. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. The curtain rises on the third act of Morning Glory. Starring Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolf Monjou. Realizing that Louis Easton's interest in her was only casual, Eva drifts aimlessly along, waiting for the break which never seems to come. Disillusioned and broken in spirit, she's forced to take any job she can find. In a cheap nightclub just off Broadway... The manager is auditioning singers. All right, what do you say? Who's next? You, kid? I I think so. Yeah, what's your name? Eva Lovelace. Well, let's hear it, sweetheart. You ready, Sam? Yeah, sure. Uh, shake it up, shake it up, kid. This lovely day will lengthen into evening. We'll sigh goodbye to all we've ever had. Alone, where we 
have walked together I'll remember April and be glad I'll be content you loved me once in April your lips were warm and love and spring were new but I a little while I won't forget but I won't be lonely I'll remember April and I'll smile Okay, sweetheart, I'll let you know Was it all right, Mr. Not bad, not bad at all. Is that the kind of stuff you do best? I, I think so. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I was looking for something a little hotter. Oh. Who's next, Sam? Hiya. Well, maybe if I tried another song. I've got to hear the rest of these kids right now. I'll let you know, sweetheart. Well, Mr. Fine, I need a job. I need one badly. Yeah, so? Well, if there's anything at all. Uh, can you dance? Well, not specialty dancing. I mean regularly, you know, partners, taxi stuff. Oh. Go on over and see Max Seeley. Tell him I sent you. All right, who's next? Who's next? <laughs> Hey, Eva, if that old Wilson shows up tonight, dance with him, will you? Well, I thought I had to dance with anyone who asked me. Sure, but kind of make a play for him. I got a guy coming I'm kind of keen on. All right. Hiya, DeVos. Well, if it ain't the fleet. Say, how about a light fantastic? This way, fleet. Oh, okay. I beg your pardon. May I have this dance? Well, that's what I'm here for. Oh. How are you, Eva? Hello, Joseph. <laughs> What are you doing here? Slumming? I came to see you. Can't we go someplace and talk? Oh, I guess so. Sit down. Thank you. You'd better order something. That's part of my job, too. Waiter. Yeah. Scotch and soda, please. Right. How did you know I was here? Well, I didn't until tonight. I've been looking for you. I finally got as far as your boarding house, and the landlady told me about this job you had. Oh. Well, of course, it's, it's only temporary, you know. I've always felt that experience is vital for an actress. You've got to draw from the adventures in life. And you're learning about life in this place? Oh, yes, every moment. I'm rubbing shoulders with reality. It's, it's really quite amazing. I can't tell you, it's, it's very interesting. You've changed, Eva. Well, I'm a little thinner, but I think I can afford it, don't you? No, no, I, I'm talking about your eyes. There's something... Oh, let's not talk about me. What about you? Are you writing another play? Just the translation of Golden Bough. I finished it finally. Goes in rehearsal next week with Rita Vernon. Well, I hope it'll be a success, Joseph. Eva, when do you think you'll have learned enough about life to take another fling at the theater? Why, I, I don't know. I, I really don't. I suppose when the time comes, I'll feel it deep inside me. Then nothing on earth will stop me. Look, we're using a few people for atmosphere. If you'd like to have something to do, I'll be glad to fix it for you. No, thanks. Oh, I know it isn't much, but it might be better than this. No. What do you say, Eva? Oh, it's... Well? It's no use, Joseph. It's no use. I just don't care anymore. But you will. You will, Eva. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes, everybody. On your toes now. Rita. Oh, Rita. Come in. Hello, Rita. Oh, Lewis. Joseph, come in. Thank you for the flowers, Joseph. You never forget me in an opening. Not at all. You don't mind if I go on with my makeup? Did you want to see us, Rita? Oh, yes, I did. Well? Uh, Lewis... 
We've been together four years. That's right. That's a long time, Rita. Very long. Hasn't it surprised you that I've never asked for a contract? No. I've always given you what you asked for. Yes. But this year, I didn't ask for what I really wanted. I see. You mean you're asking for it now? Yes, Lewis. Go on. I want a contract to play this part in New York and on the road. I want a year's guarantee, $1,500 a week, and 50% of the profits. What? Rita, you've gone insane. Think it over, Lewis. Think it over when it's nearly curtain time? If you don't meet my terms, there won't be any curtain. Now, you listen to me. You can't throw over a show like this. Can't I? Who's going to stop me? I'll find plenty of ways to stop you. I'll fix it so you'll never get a walk-on in a road company. Try it. Do you think I need you? Do you think I need Broadway? Why, I could sign a picture contract tomorrow morning that'll make your paycheck look like a cigar coupon. Why, you cheap little thieving ham, Lewis. Don't you call me a ham. You're worse than a ham. Come on, I want to speak to you. Get out of here. Lewis, come on. I'll show you, I'll show you. Get out, you shoestrings, fork. I'll show that dame. Listen, will you? She's a rat. Did you bring me out here to tell me that? Don't give in to I wouldn't. I'd keep the theater dark before I do that. Oh, you would. Well, you're certainly generous with my bankroll. Listen, there's a girl right here in this theater I have a lot of faith in. Hedges and I have been coaching her as general understudy. She could play the Vernon part. You mean you trust her to open tonight? Any time. Without a rehearsal? She doesn't need a rehearsal. She knows every line, every move, every gesture. She's letter perfect. Who is she? Eva Lovelace. Oh, for the love of... Go away, go away. Now, look. I'm going back and talk to Vernon. But, Lewis, she's got to be reasonable. She's got to. Rita, now listen. Get out! Get out! Very reasonable, very. I'd like to break her neck. Lois, if you'll only listen to me. Are you sure about Lovelace? I've told you. Seymour. Yeah? Get hold of that Lovelace girl. Get out of the fitter in the Vernon costumes. Give her a dressing room for herself and get me a script, a script. Now, look, Eva. We're risking an awful lot. You realize that? Yes. Joseph says you can do it. Can you? Lewis. Let her tell me. Can you do this part, Eva? Yes. All right. Is that costume finished, Ella? Yes, sir. I'll have her second change ready when she comes off. Good. Mr. Easton! Coming. Hold the curtain a few more minutes. Yes, sir. Are you all set, Eva? I... Yes. We'll be waiting for you. Hurry. Oh, Joseph, Joseph. Here, here. Let me see you. Joseph. You look beautiful. Wait, listen. I... I don't know whether I can go through with it. Eva? I told him I could, but I don't know. He'll be, he'll be watching me every move. You've got to forget about him. I can't, I can't. I've never even spoken to him since that night until he came in here. And it was just the same, but he's changed. Did you notice? He, he looks so pale and so tired. And I'm tired. I'm tired, too. I, it's just come over me how tired I Eva, am. Eva, listen, you've got to pull yourself together. There were times together. when I wanted to kill myself when I didn't see him or hear from him. Then I thought, I'll forget I'll make up for everything by making myself a wonderful actress. You will be tonight. But suppose I'm not. Suppose I'm not wonderful. Then everything's gone. If I can't act, there's nothing else. I don't think I can act, Joseph. I don't think I can. Eva, look at me. This is the thing you've wanted and struggled for and suffered for. This is your dream coming true. Do you understand that? Everything you've done, everything that's happened to you has just been leading to this moment. The time you came to the office. The way you met Lewis. The way you feel about him now. It's all part of it. Don't fail him. Don't fail yourself. Or me. You, Joseph? Certain. Are you ready, Miss Lovelace? Well, Eva? Yes. I'm ready. And that was why I loved you, Michael. Ready with that curtain. And that's why I have to leave you now. For a while, at least. Goodbye, my darling. Curtain. All right, take it up, take it up. She did it, Joseph. It's a smash. We've never had anything like it. They're yelling for her. Better take this call alone. Stay out there, Eva. Stay out. The girl's marvelous. She's seen such a performance. She's better than Vernon ever hoped to be. Eva Lovelace, where's she been all this time? One side, please, one side. <laughs> Miss Lovelace can't speak to you now. Oh, Get her in the dressing room, Joseph. Thank you very much. Everybody, please, just a moment. 
Well, that crowd would tell you to pieces. <laughs> Eva, my dear, you are magnificent. Oh, Mr. Hedges, you taught me. The pupil is far, far better than the teacher. Miss Lovelace. Yes, Ella. May I congratulate you, Miss Lovelace? You were so beautiful, my dear, so lovely. Thank you, Ella. Shall I help you with your costume now? Oh, no, I, I, I want to wear it just a little while longer. Very well, my dear. The Hedges, where's Joseph? They're taking care of the press, I imagine. Shall I call him? Will you? Of course. Eva, Eva, I am at a loss for words. You were a revelation to me. Oh, I'm so happy, Lewis. I can't tell you how it made me feel to think I'd never given you a chance before. Oh, but you did, remember? Yes, and I'm particularly ashamed to think I, I let you get lost the way you did. I should have taken better care of you. Oh, let's not talk about that, please. Well, I'm never going to let you get lost again. Never. Oh, Lewis, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. We're going to do great things, you and I. A great play every year. Your name in lights. Why, it'll be the greatest partnership the theater has ever known. Partnership? Yes. Oh, Eva, you're not going to pull a Rita Vernon on me so soon, are you? Oh, no, no. I, I just thought that... Oh, I'm, I'm such a fool, Lewis. Such a silly, silly fool. I found him, Mr. Easton. He'll be in directly. Thank you. I think the press is waiting to see you, too, Eva. Are they? They think you were quite wonderful, my dear. But, but I'm just beginning. I'm, I'm going to make you so much more proud of me, Mr. Hedges. I'm going to be so much more wonderful. My dear, so many people can be wonderful. Every year we see them, these young people who come to New York with the idea of conquering the world. It's amazing how many of them succeed, too, and then fail. Youth comes to the front. Youth has its hour of glory. But so often it's just a morning glory. A flower that's gone before the sun is high. Oh, I, I wish you could have waited until tomorrow to say all this to me. Hedges is right, Eva. That woman, Ella, the costume mistress, do you know who she was? Twenty-five years ago, she was the toast of Broadway. Her name was Esther Forrest. Esther Forrest, I've heard of her. Well, you don't hear of her now. She was a morning glory. But nothing must interfere with your career, Eva. Do you understand me? You've got to keep your head. That's why you're coming to my office tomorrow and sign a contract to play this part as long as the public wants to see you in it. That's why you mustn't take people too seriously. The people who are going to be running after you from now on, telling you what to play next, living your life for you. You must keep your health and your money and your head you don't want to be a morning glory, Eva Lovelace. You'd better get out there, Lewis. Right. Good night, Eva. Good night. Tomorrow morning, Eva. At the office. Yes. Eva, what's the matter? What? Well, you look sort of crushed. Joseph, I... I was a great success tonight, wasn't I? Yes, a very great success. Yes. And now it doesn't seem to make any difference. It's all... It's all so empty. Why, you mustn't feel like that. I understand, though. Do you? I think so. You've understood everything. You've been so good to me, Joseph. Should I tell you why? Oh, no, don't. Please let me. Even though you know already, I've loved you for such a long time, Eva. I know what you've been through. I know how it's hurt you. But it's not a hurt that can't be soothed by understanding and care and love. You'd be happy with me. You would, Eva. Yes, I, I think I would. Eva? <laughs> well, that's all I'm going to say to you now. This is your hour. Your hour of glory. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, Joseph, I, I'm not afraid anymore. They were trying to frighten me before. Trying to frighten me into being sensible, but they can't do it. I'm too happy. I won't be sensible. Not now, not yet. You've got to let me be as foolish as I want. I'll have a white ermine coat and I'll have rooms full of orchids and little apple trees and white violets. And you've got to let me think I'm much more wonderful than anyone else in the world just now. And you've got to promise not to try and make me sensible. For I'm not afraid of being just a morning glory. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> In 
just a moment, our stars will return to the microphone for a curtain call. Now, here's an interesting thing I read the other day. A soldier needs five to 20 times as much clothing as one of his fellow Americans in civilian life. Well, with so much of our fabric supply going into military service and other wartime uses, too, you can see why it's so important for all of us to make every bit of clothing we have last and wear longer than ever before. And that's why so many women today are giving their washables Lux Care. Here's what the Office of War Information says about conserving clothes. Mild soap and a minimum of rubbing will prolong life. That's expert advice. And if you stick to Lux, it's easy to follow. Lux flakes are preferred by women everywhere for mildness. And with gentle Lux care, there's no harmful cake soap rubbing. Nothing to fade or shrink or injure fabrics or colors. Yes, pretty rayon dresses, blouses, sweaters, gay cottons, and nice household linens will last longer if you Lux them. Actually, more makers of nice washables advise Lux flakes than advise all other soaps put together. So start tomorrow to save your pretty washables, to keep them lovely longer, the Lux way. Now, Mr. DeMille returns with our stars. Back to the footlights now come the three stars who put the glory in morning glory tonight. Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolphe Monjou. Well, thank you, Mr. DeMille. It was really a thrill for me to be in morning glory. It's the kind of a part I've always wanted to play. And I congratulate you, Judy, on a talent that can take musical comedy and drama like this right in your stride. Same here, Judy. You know, CB, I personally don't see how Hollywood could ever get along without Adolf Monjou to play the theatrical producer parts. It's practically a tradition now. Well, it's all right with me as long as I don't have to produce anything. That's a job I leave to CB. <laughs> At last, a man who appreciates us. I'll give you an epitaph, Adolf. Here lies the only actor who liked producers. <laughs> That's pretty ungrateful, Adolf. You sympathize with him, and the first thing he wants to do is to write your epitaph. <laughs> Get me out of this, Judy. Sure. How about next week's play? What's it going to be? Judy, it's something to make everybody forget their troubles. Because next week, our play is My Favorite Blonde. And the stars are Bob Hope and Ann Southern. <laughs> Just picture Bob Hope trying to escape from a gang of spies with a vital military secret. Plus, a beautiful blonde. <laughs> and I don't think you'll want to miss Paramount's favorite comedian, starring with Ann Southern in My Favorite Blonde. It certainly sounds like a winner, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Keep your eye on Judy, gentlemen. We've got a future. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night. When the Lux Radio Theater presents Bob Hope and Ann Southern in My Favorite Blonde. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, a special announcement. There are two superb new radio shows on Wednesday night. First, Bob Burns, one of America's favorite comedians in the role of the Arkansas Traveler. And immediately following, there's Lionel Barrymore. Long one of the great figures of our stage and screen, he is now one of the great figures of radio in his new series, The Mayor of the Town. You can hear both of these fine shows every Wednesday night over these same stations. Your local paper will tell you the time. John Payne was heard through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studios. His current picture is Iceland. Adolf Manjou will soon be seen in the Columbia picture, You Were Never Lovelier. Heard in tonight's play were B. Benaderet as Rita, Norman Field as Hedges, and Lillian Bond, Gloria Blondell, Anne Duran, Fred Mackay, Dick Ryan, Paul Langton, Frank Penny, Tyler McVeigh, Leo Cleary, and Lee Arnold. Join us again next week. Be part of the coast-to-coast -coast audience that gathers each week to enjoy this hour of dramatic entertainment. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Bob Hope and Ann Southern in My Favorite Blonde. V-I-M-M-S. Vims. F-R-E-E. -E, free. There's now a special trial offer of Vims at your druggist. The makers of Vims want you to find out what Vims can do for you. 
Buy the large $1.69 package. Get the regular 50-cent size absolutely free. The supply is limited, so hurry. Get your free VIMS right away. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Brought to you by RadioClassics.com. All copyrights are the property of their respective owners.